Today I want to talk a little bit about the effect of a crosswind on a base canopy slider down deployment. So I'm talking about low airspeed deployments here, not skydiving deployments, not slider up deployments, slider down deployments, and I'm talking about the effect of a crosswind. In general, the crosswind is important when the crosswind speed exceeds the jumper's fall rate. So, if you have a crosswind speed of 15 miles an hour or less, this is going to be important on delays less than two seconds. As the delay increases, the crosswind becomes less and less important until the point where it's irrelevant. Let's talk about what happens during that deployment. All right, on this board I've drawn a simplified diagram of four different deployment cases. We're talking about free fall deployments on the top, static line deployments on the bottom, zero wind on the left side, crosswind on the right side. I'm going to say the crosswind is around 15 miles an hour, but just some crosswind. The overall magnitude is not very important. In these uh, somewhat crudely drawn diagrams, this circle down here is our jumper. Then we've got the lines and the risers. This square is the canopy extracting, and that triangle is the pilot chute pulling straight out. On a free fall deployment jump in zero wind, this is basically like a skydiving deployment. What we're seeing is that the pilot chute pulls more or less straight up, the canopy comes straight up. Opening is usually fairly good on heading rate, uh, depending on whether it's pilot chute motion or other things. But in terms of wind, this has pretty good heading rate. On a static line deployment, the static line is fixed here, uh, either on a static line device or in the hand of whoever's holding the pilot chute assist. The pilot chute is just down here below, and we've got a straight bridle, canopy, risers and lines, and the jumper. In general, this, a static line or PCA in zero wind, will have the best opening heading of any base deployment because there is no pilot chute motion, and the jumper is directly below the extraction point. It's important when doing these jumps, of course, to place the attachment point directly between the risers so that you load them at the same time. Let's talk about what happens in a free fall deployment. In this diagram, I've drawn a free fall deployment in a crosswind condition. Generally, what we see during this is that the wind will pull the pilot chute in the downwind direction. That means the extraction happens at an angle to the jumper, which means that the upwind riser will load first. The downwind riser will still be slack because the canopy is extracting to one side. That does a couple of important things to our opening. The first thing we see is this asymmetric riser loading. The upwind riser loads first, and that will turn the canopy towards the upwind riser. So our riser loading effect turns the canopy into the wind. The next thing that we see is the canopy will tend to windsock. As the cells pressurize, we have a bunch of long, narrow tubes that are wide in the front and closed at the back, uh, which is essentially a windsock. We have seven of them sewn together side by side to form the canopy, but what we have is seven windsocks. Those windsocks tend to turn and line up on the wind line during the deployment. So during the pressurization, we see a windsock effect that lines the canopy up on the wind line. Two really important things here. The first one is, if you want to overcome this effect, your most effective strategy is to take more delay. In general, the longer delay you can take in windy conditions, the better your opening heading is going to be. The second thing that's important here is that this effect is actually quite predictable. Wheel seat loads with five jumpers all getting identical off-heading openings because of a sufficiently strong crosswind. The thing about a predictable off-heading opening is we can plan for it which means that this is actually not a very dangerous condition as long as we've done our homework and we know what's going to happen next. Contrast that to the static line deployment. On a static line or PCA in a crosswind condition, we still see the same asymmetric riser loading, but it's working the other way. What happens is that as the jumper begins his free fall, he drifts very slightly to one side. That means the static line attachment point is no longer centered between the risers, creating asymmetric riser loading in the downwind direction. In this case, what we see is the canopy turning downwind. Unfortunately, there is no longer a windsock effect because the tail of the canopy, not its nose, is presented to the wind. That means the canopy turns downwind some random amount that I cannot predict very well. This opening is actually quite dangerous because we can't predict where the opening is going to go. We'll see five jumpers on the same load. One of them gets a 10 degree off heading. One of them gets a 170 degree off heading. With that much variance, it's very difficult to plan what your next step is going to be. 